It's time to design another character, and this one is inspired by fire. It's Leo season, and you probably don't know this, but we've actually already created Leo. Last year, I took part in the Mermaid Art Challenge, which you might have seen on my channel. We actually recorded the entire thing. The prompt was Zodiac, and we created, I've gone past it, this one. Since I am a Leo, I chose to do a Leo for the prompt, and this is what we've created. So honestly, I'm thinking we're gonna keep with the same character. I love that the hair looks like a mane. I love the extravagant jewelry and the tie around all of the clothes. And this character's gonna stay a mermaid. Let's put this to one side and head over to Pinterest. Since I am a Leo, I haven't got very much in the Pinterest board because I already know a Leo is a lion. They are fiery, courageous, bold. Courageous, confident, independent, fearless. All traits of a lion. Fire sign, the ruling planet is the sun, so lots of yellow, lots of reds and oranges. So honestly, I think we kind of nailed it last time. It's not completely spot on because I wasn't following it to a T, but I think we definitely got it close enough. This is the symbol and I also saved some pieces of art. Honestly, there were not many pieces that I could find. In this one, I love the way that they've done a pattern around the outside. I just think that's really cool. This one I think is pretty cute but I don't think I'll be doing a lion cub. This one I also love. I love the fact that they've gone for gold jewelry. I kind of went for extravagant clothes, but I love the fact that they've gone for lots of jewelry and even bits in the hair. This one has a similar vibe, but what I love about this one is how bright the highlights are. This is kind of what I'm aiming for as a reference, very similar to what I've got down here. Very tight curly hair, and this one I also saw, which I love the pose for, because previously we've gone for a full body pose, I think this one is gonna be nice and up close. We need to show more of her face because that didn't really come across in that one. And that's it for the references, super simple. Let's quickly sketch it out. We want to keep with a very similar look. And again, I'm gonna use the other side of the peach toba prompts because I've got no other way to use them. Quite a bit of transfer, so I might not do that one. Because we've already got a really good design here, I'm just gonna make a note of the traits that we need to include and maybe what the pose will look like. Let's do orange. They are a fire sign. The color palette is red, orange, and yellow. I think this one is gonna lean a lot more into the yellow rather than the red, which Aries was, because we kind of want it to be reminiscent of a lion. Confident, courageous, independent. They have a dark side. I like the fact that this one has a rock because she is a mermaid, so I think what we're gonna do is this kind of pose but resting on this rock. And I can try and get the colours and everything correct too, but I think the colours will go a lot better on the archer's paper. This one is a little bit patchy, it was also very small to work with. Hopefully doing a nice big face will make that a lot better. There. Do you remember when I said in the first episode I wanted to focus on hands? and improving anatomy. Yeah, I haven't really had time to do that. I kind of moved house. So the hands aren't gonna look good, but it, 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 I'm just warning you now. No. Okay, this is what we've got for our Leo gal. A little bit closer this time so you can actually see the face. I kept the big hoop earrings. I think it's a little bit iconic. In the original, you can't really see the face very much, so we're definitely honing in on that this time. But at the same time, it's really hard to see what's going on in this one, so I feel like we can kind of change it up if we like, that's fine. This is Leo, I'm gonna go work on the sketch now, and I will see you when we're painting her. Thank you. 
So let's talk about who a Leo is. Honestly, the core facts of what a Leo is explains them perfectly. Leo is the fifth star sign of the zodiac calendar and is symbolized by the lion. They are ruled by the sun, so it makes perfect sense that its element is fire. On top of that, its associated body part is the heart. And if that doesn't paint a very clear picture, I don't know what does. Fun fact, as with a lot of the zodiac star signs, it has its roots in ancient Greece. With Leo specifically, it refers to Hercules' triumph over the lion and has since been a symbol of victory, courage and pride. The star sign itself holds a number of incredibly bright stars, including Regulus, the little king, which helps with the regal nature of Leo. Unsurprisingly, with all this information, Leos are outgoing individuals. They love being the center of attention, they want everyone to know that they're there and are proud to be. Being a fire sign, they are natural leaders, but coming from a regal inner strength rather than a fiery passion and loyalty that's an Aries. They are the true definition of courage. As strong and steadfast can be imagined, Leos are an inspiration to all around them. They lead from the front and are seen as aspirational, a height to be reached. They radiate an inner glow as if they themselves were the sun. They are warm, outreaching, passionate people and want to spread their warmth as far and wide as possible. They are the lion at the head of the pride, the sun at the center of the solar system, the life and soul of the party. And honestly, I'm not sure I can relate to any of this. As an introverted person that just wants to blend in. This does however lead to Leo's one major weakness. They are prideful to a fault. As they feel the need to be the center of attention and a leader, they can often feel slighted if that's reciprocated. As with all fire signs, that passion and warmth can very quickly be turned to anger. They burn bright and can often leave people feeling burnt. In terms of Leo's in fiction, it's exactly who you'd expect. Harry Potter, Peter Parker, Marjorie Tyrell, even Mufasa from The Lion King, they are all Leos. And it makes perfect sense, they are warm leaders that people are naturally drawn to. They do have their faults and they have some strong villains. Hans from Frozen, Love from You and Cruella de Vil are also Leos. But they do show these qualities as well. The natural charisma, people skills and a strength of determination which defines their lives. They also show that pride and arrogance, which in all three cases is their downfall. So, shall we meet an old character? Leo is a mermaid. In the kingdom, mermaids would not exactly be considered friendly as a species. They are reclusive and secretive and often causing trouble when the water and land meet. The people fear the open water fear that they'll stray into the hunting grounds of a mermaid's kingdom. Whilst neither side are actively combative, cooperation doesn't really exist. Leo was born into one of the largest and most feared clans of merfolk. A natural born leader, she was seen as an up and coming leader in the group, but was ostracized for having non-traditional opinions. The opinions were that their people should cooperate with the landwalkers to safeguard their future, rather than that of the hostile relationship that they've held for centuries. Whilst a lot of the young merfolk agreed and rallied around this more forward thinking, the vocal majority, the respected and well-established elders, were strongly against this. They preferred to continue spreading fear and anger around the land, encouraging raiding and piracy on those that dared enter their territories. Leo simply did not understand. She saw that all the landwalkers were doing was looking after their own, only retaliating to the actions of the merfolk, whilst the merfolk were doing the exact same thing. A cycle of violence and hostility which made any form of growth impossible. So Leo took it into her own hands. With a small party of like-minded people, she left the safety of the waters and headed to talk to the local port town. Whilst the people of the town knew that the magic of the merfolk allowed them to walk on the land, it was only for a short period of time, which led to the feeling of unease rather than of familiarity. Leo could only stay out of the water for so long, a day at most, before she had to return to her natural state. This didn't hold her back though. 
She talked to the people of the town, made friends, helped sailors in need, and built relations with the land walkers. For the first time, Leo saw the future of her people as a bright one. After months of integration and hard work on both sides, it culminated in Leo's dream, an actual trade agreement. The landwalkers would provide supplies of metal and stone, whilst the merfolk were to provide gems and lost treasures from the human ships lost to sea. The start of a prosperous alliance. Leo stayed in the town, celebrating with her friends both from land and sea, but the elders of her tribe were outraged at Leo's betrayal. They incited violence that the trade ship was a trick and a precursor to an invasion. They felt as though the landwalkers could not be trusted. As the boat reached the meeting point, they didn't find a group of well-meaning merfolk ambassadors, but instead a full raiding party of warriors and hunters. The merchants took Leo at her word and didn't come prepared for combat. It was over quickly. By the time the ship had returned, every single landwalker aboard was dead, their bodies strapped to the ship's sides in a horrific warning. The people of the town were outraged and blamed Leo, saying that she was a spy and that this is what she wanted all along. She was blamed for this massacre. Leo pleaded her case, but knew there was nothing to be done. She was angry with her own people for being so stuck in the past, for not wanting to actually move forward. The cruelty sickened her. She knew the people of the town would only retaliate, naturally. As the anger became violent, Leo was lucky that someone in the crowd saw her for who she was. Harry saw leadership in Leo and knew instinctively that she was a good person. The group of friends saved Leo from the mob and hid her in the town. Leo knew she could no longer stay. She needed water and the town was no longer safe for her. Yet, after speaking with Ares and Lady Gemini, she realised that she couldn't return to her people either. They saw her as a traitor just as much as the town did. Stuck between two warring worlds, Leo declined her friend's offer of staying in town. She started this movement and was not going to let this setback define them. One way or another, the worlds will be united in peace. Leo, she's going to make sure of it. We've revisited an old character created for Mermaid, and I think this is looking like a pretty good painting. The original painting was so small in comparison, I love that we can actually now see the face of Leo. Saying that, I think the first sketch we did in the sketchbook is better. It was really difficult to try and recreate that sketch because honestly, it was perfect. I tried to add those orange tones to the skin, but honestly, I think the skin tone could have been a lot warmer to look a little bit closer to the original. What do you think of the character Leo and which star sign is your favourite so far? I love Leo but I'm probably a little bit biased. Thanks for joining me for another character design episode. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye bye!